Hey legends, today we're diving into a fascinating world where destiny isn't just a concept, it's woven into the very fabric of existence. We're going to explore three incredible groups of beings who, according to different cultures, are responsible for shaping the fates of gods and mortals alike. Imagine a world where your life is a thread, carefully spun, measured, and cut by mysterious figures working behind the scenes. Sound intriguing? Well, that's exactly what we're about to uncover as we compare the Greek fates, the Norse Norns, and the Egyptian Shai. These cosmic weavers have captured the imagination of people for thousands of years, and today, we're going to find out why. Let's start our journey in ancient Greece, where three sisters known as the Fates, or Moirai, ruled over the destinies of both gods and mortals. Picture three elderly women, sitting in a dimly lit room, surrounded by countless threads, each representing a life. First, we have Clotho, whose name means spinner. With her spindle, she creates the thread of life for every being that comes into existence. As she works, she hums a gentle tune, bringing new lives into the world with each turn of her magical tool. Next is Lachesis, the allotter. She measures the thread of life, deciding how long each person or god will live. Imagine her carefully stretching out each thread, her wise eyes determining the length of days each being will enjoy. Finally, there's Atropos, the unturnable. Her role is perhaps the most feared, for she's the one who cuts the thread when a life is meant to end. With her shears always at the ready, Atropos makes the final, irreversible decision. Now, here's where it gets really interesting. The fates were so powerful that even the mighty Zeus, king of the gods, was said to be subject to their decisions. Can you imagine that? The thunderbolt-wielding ruler of Olympus, having to accept the fates' decrees just like any mortal. There's a famous story about a hero named Meliager. When he was born, the fates appeared to his mother and pointed to a log burning in the fireplace. They declared that Meliager would live only as long as that log remained unburned. His mother quickly doused the flames and hid the log away. Years later, in a moment of anger, she threw the log into a fire, unknowingly ending her son's life. This tale shows how the fates' decrees were thought to be inescapable, no matter how clever humans tried to be. Now, let's travel north to the frosty realms of Norse mythology. Here, we meet the Norns, three mysterious women who share some similarities with the Greek fates, but with their own unique twist. The Norns live at the base of Yggdrasil, the great world tree that connects all realms of existence. Every day, they draw water from the well of Erd and use it to water Yggdrasil, keeping the cosmic tree healthy and vibrant. But that's not all they do. Like the fates, the Norns are weavers of destiny. However, instead of spinning thread, they carve runes into the trunk of Yggdrasil, etching the fates of gods and humans alike into the very structure of the universe. The three main Norns are named Erd, Verdandi, and Skuld. Erd represents the past, Verdandi the present, and Skuld the future. Together they weave what the Norse called Word, a concept that's a bit like fate but with more complexity and nuance. Imagine Erd, ancient and wise, her fingers tracing the grooves of past events in Yggdrasil's bark. Verdandi, always alert and active, carving the runes of the present moment. And Skuld, her eyes distant, seeing possibilities that haven't yet come to pass. Her knife poised to shape what's to come. One of the most fascinating things about the Norns is that they're not just dealing with individual fates. They're managing the destiny of the entire cosmos. In Norse mythology, even the gods aren't immune to fate. The Norns know about Ragnarok, the great battle at the end of the world, where many gods will die, but they don't share this knowledge freely. They let events unfold as they must. There's a story about the god Odin, who was so desperate to understand the future that he sacrificed one of his eyes in exchange for a drink from the Well of Erd. He gained great wisdom, but even he couldn't change what the Norns had decreed. It just goes to show that in the Norse world, knowledge and power don't always mean control over one's destiny. For our final stop, we're heading to the sun-baked lands of ancient Egypt. Here, we encounter a concept of fate that's quite different from what we've seen so far. Meet the Shai, not a group of three, but a multitude of deities, each one responsible for an individual's destiny. Imagine having your very own destiny god following you from birth to death, shaping your life's path. That's what the ancient Egyptians believed in. 
The word shy can be translated as fate or destiny, but it also means that which is ordained. Unlike the Greek fates or Norse Norns, who dealt with everyone's destinies, each person had their own shy. This personal deity was thought to be present at your birth, staying with you throughout your life, guiding your steps and influencing your choices. The shy weren't distant, unapproachable beings. Ancient Egyptians believed they could communicate with their shy through prayer and offerings. They might ask for guidance, protection, or even try to negotiate a better fate. It was a much more personal, intimate relationship with destiny than we've seen in the other mythologies. But here's where it gets really interesting. The shy weren't all powerful. They worked alongside other forces like the god of creation, Kanum, who was said to mold each person on his potter's wheel, and the goddess Meskhenet, who breathed life into newborns and announced their destiny. There's a fascinating story from an ancient Egyptian text called the Tale of the Doomed Prince. In this tale, a prince is born, and the Hathors, goddess-like beings similar to the shy, decree that he will die by a crocodile, a snake, or a dog. The pharaoh, hearing this, tries to protect his son by keeping him isolated in a stone house in the desert. But as the prince grows up, he decides to face his fate head on. He has adventures, narrowly escaping the crocodile and the snake. The tale ends abruptly, but it illustrates how Egyptians viewed fate as something that could perhaps be negotiated with, but ultimately unavoidable. This idea of a personal destiny deity adds a whole new dimension to our exploration of fate. It's not just about three cosmic beings deciding everything, but a vast network of individual gods, each one intimately involved with a single life. Now that we've met these fascinating beings, let's take a moment to compare them. What do they have in common and how are they different? First, the similarities. All three cultures, Greek, Norse, and Egyptian, believed in supernatural beings who had some control over human destiny. They all saw fate as something woven or crafted, whether it was with thread, runes, or the molding of a life. But the differences are just as intriguing. The Greek fates and Norse Norns were trinities, groups of three with specific roles. The Egyptian shy, on the other hand, were individual deities for each person. This reflects a more personal, customized view of fate in Egyptian culture. The level of interaction with humans also varied. The fates were distant, rarely interacting directly with mortals. The Norns were similarly aloof, dealing more with the big picture of cosmic destiny. But the Shai were intimately involved in individual lives, open to communication and negotiation. Another interesting difference is in how absolute their power was perceived to be. The Greek fates seemed almost untouchable. Even Zeus couldn't overrule them. The Norse Norns were similarly powerful, shaping even the destinies of gods. But in Egyptian belief, while the Shai were influential, they worked alongside other forces and could potentially be swayed by prayer and offerings. These differences tell us a lot about how each culture viewed the concept of destiny. The Fates, the Norns, and the Shai, each group offers us a unique perspective on how ancient cultures grappled with the big questions of destiny, free will, and the shape of a life.